This is a repair video for a Tektronix DPO uh, 3034 oscilloscope. Uh, I think the, the problem is uh, not uncommon in that uh, the multi-purpose controls don't work uh, reliably. Uh, speaking to colleagues in other businesses who use the same scope, they seem to have the same problems. So here's the uh, here are the symptoms. So the top multi-purpose control knob moves the cursors, and as you can see as I turn it, they move correctly. However, if I use multi-purpose uh, knob B, if I turn it really slowly, it works okay. But if I turn it quickly, sometimes it even goes back in the wrong direction. See, I'm turning it clockwise and it's going to the left. If I turn it really slowly though, it goes in the correct direction. So I suspect this is a problem with the rotor encoder. Unfortunately, you have to strip pretty much everything off. Um, I've taken the knobs off, they just pull off. Uh, put them to one side. There's a service manual, manual that you can download from uh, the web that shows you where all the screw positions are. You need a Torx T15 screwdriver to undo most of the screws. Um, I'll disassemble it a bit further and then I'll uh, video what I do inside. Right, when you get inside, unfortunately there are four screws which are hidden underneath the main board and underneath the attenuator board in this position here which need to be undone to secure this unsecure this frame uh, from the front panel of the scope. Uh, if it wasn't for that it would actually be quite an easy uh, access to the rotary encoder. Can I suggest when you're working on the scope that you keep the protective uh, front uh, cover on and then it will save you from scratching the screen and damaging the, uh, the, the knobs and buttons. When you get to this level, um, there are screws around the side which you need to access. Um, I think from what I remember the power supply can stay in. Uh, you just need to disconnect some of the uh, cables that plug into the main board. And then there are numerous screws uh, located around the main board uh, that you need to remove so that you can pull that board out. Then there's a metal cover underneath which you need to remove and then you can get at the attenuator board and then finally there's a row of screws underneath that which allow the frame to come away from the front panel. This is the circuit board from behind the front panel. This has all of the rotary encoders and the positions for uh, the rubber membrane uh, switch panel. Um, I've removed uh, what I believe to be the faulty rotary encoder from this position here. Uh, it takes a reasonable amount of heat to remove it um, and the three uh, terminals, uh, the centre one I think is the supply which goes through to a power plane. There doesn't seem to be any thermal relief so you need quite a bit of temperature to uh, desolder that. Uh, needless to say you need to be careful not to damage the PCB. I think this whole PCB uh, in this form you can buy from Tektronix for around about £650. So it's not cheap, you don't really want to damage it. Anyway, my new rotary encoder has arrived um, so I'm going to fit this um, in place of the old one, solder it in and then fit the whole um, scope back together and test it out. Okay so the uh, rotary encoder has now been replaced and the scope put back together. It's powered up correctly, it's gone through its self-check and here we have the two cursors on the screen and if we adjust the top control you can see they move smoothly in the correct direction, no jumping. And if I adjust the bottom control, it moves the second cursor again smoothly and in the correct direction. So that's the fix. 79 pence. Not a bad uh, price. So I hope this video is helpful to others with the same problem.